In this video, we're going to configure PHP files that we've integrated into our application so that they can be used uh, to send a push notification. And uh, let's remember uh, the uh, files that we've integrated in our PHP project for push notifications are stored in folder called APNs, Apple Push Notification Services. And um, there are two files, the samples file uh, with the examples of push messages, the APNs file, and the folder with uh, two classes, uh, class APNs and class and database uh, connection. So uh, let's uh, go into classes folder and have a look um, at what needs to be done there. I'll double click to open it, scroll all the way to the top. And uh, first of all, in this file, uh, what we need to do is to change the value of the development. Uh, if uh, it's not set to sandbox, uh, you will need to uh, rename it to sandbox because uh, for the time when we develop our mo mobile application and test it on our uh, local, um, uh, on our own device, uh, we are in development process and we will need to set this value to sandbox. As soon as we move our mobile application to App Store and submit it and it gets approved by Apple, we will uh, need to change this value to production. But um, while developing, it should be set to sandbox. Okay, so our value is sandbox, we scroll down and uh, here we have a, a path to our log file. So that will need to be sent to, um, to whatever path you have. I will uh, skip for now. I don't uh, need log files at this moment. And I will leave um, uh, log file max size. Uh, I will also skip that. Uh, this one is very important and I'm going to configure it now. So it's the absolute path to your production certificate. And this is the absolute path to your production certificate on your server. So um, uh, let me open my um, file zilla. So this is file, uh, the FTP client file transfer protocol uh, client that I use to upload files uh, to my server. On the left side, I have my local uh, environment, and this is the project that I have, Swift app, which is inside of applications folder, XAMPP, uh, HT docs, and this is the APNs file. This is the, the files I'm talking now about. So we are inside of classes. So I'll double click to go in, and we're talking about um, APNs class right now. And this is my remote uh, server. Uh, this is Linux machine that I host and run on Amazon. And this is for um, demonstration purposes only. I do not have this machine running all the time. Uh, once I record the tutorial and I'm done, I will terminate this machine. Okay, and this is Linux machine and my um, uh, web server Apache 2 is located uh, it has, uh, it's inside a var folder, www, html, and um, inside of that folder, I have two uh, other folders, PHP my admin that I use to manage uh, MySQL database and the photo app folder where I store um, PHP scripts of this particular example. So if I go in, I have APNs folder, I go in, I have classes folder. So um, I will store production and development certificates in this folder. So um, um, we've created a production certificates and development certificates and we've stored them on our desktop. So for development um, purposes, the, the development push certificate um, is on the desktop in my case and the production push, push certificate is on the desktop in my case. So I'll select these two files I'll simply drag and drop them to my server. So both files are now uploaded and the path is um, they are inside, inside of var www html for app APNs. So I'll copy this path and I'll go back to NetBeans and I'll select this path and update it. Okay, and then I need to make sure that the file name is also correct. So I'll go back to my um, uh, filezilla and I'll single click on the file 
and copy its name and then come back and replace it here. So it's development push certificate. Well, I'm sorry, this is for production. I need to change, choose production file name. And this is very important because if I provide production instead of development, I mean, it choose development instead of production, this will not work. So this is absolute path to your production certificate. And so this, this is absolute path to my production uh, push certificate uh, PEM file. And remember um, not to make um, a typo here. Okay, and next is the path phrase that we used to protect the certificate with. When I was exporting and creating the certificate, I created a password that I used uh, and my password was a very simple one two three four five six seven eight nine like you uh, please do not make a, a simple password as I uh, created for this example make a very secure password let it be alphanumeric digits and numbers uh, make them of uh, if you uh, use I mean digits and letters and if you use letters let them be of different uh, cases uppercase and lowercase so that it, it is secure Okay, so production certificate is set, and then we will go to um, Apple Production uh, Gateway. Now, this value do not uh, does not need to be changed. Leave it as is. This uh, uh, gateway URL is correct. Oops, sorry. Okay, and then we go to our next value, production uh, service URL. Leave it as is we don't need to change it what we need to change is sandbox the next one the absolute path to our development certificate so my development certificate is copied and it is in the same folder as my production certificate so i'll simply copy the subfolder i will not copy the file name only the path to the folder okay i copy it now make sure that the file name is correct. So that's going to be for development purposes. So I'll single click on the file, copy its name, go back to my NetBeans and then select the file name and paste it here. Okay, and also very important to set the pass uh, phrase for this certificate. I used the same pass phrase for production and development certificates so i provide the same pass phrase here if i scroll down i don't want to change this value they're all good scroll down and i think this is it with this file yes there is uh, nothing else to change uh, in this file let's keep it as is uh, let's go to a uh, database connection uh, php uh, there is nothing uh, we really need to change in this file as well for it to work so uh, let's uh, keep it as is. Let's go to APN's PHP file. Um, and by the way, uh, before I go further on, because I've made changes to my class APN's file and I've updated some of the URLs, I will need to upload this file to my server because now it's new. So I'll go inside of classes because this file is stored inside of classes folder. I'll take the file from my local computer. I'll drag and drop it to my uh, remote server drag and drop it yes uh, always use this operation overwrite okay so now the file is updated I'll go back to my NetBeans development environment uh, we've discussed APNs we've discussed the database connection let's go to APNs folder well uh, first of all let's get rid of this very first line now uh, we don't need it okay and then we'll scroll down now here we are importing uh, files that are stored in a folder called classes and this is automatic uh, import so um, we can uh, use this approach or if it doesn't work for your php installation uh, configuration you can uh, use you can comment out um, this code like this you can comment it out and then just uh, use require ones or use include um, and then type the file name here APNs like this so you need to do it for APNs and you need to do it for the other 
which is a DB Connect class, uh, DB Connect like this. But I've tested, uh, I've tested it on my PHP installation on my Amazon uh, Linux server, and it, this approach works fine. Okay, the next one is a uh, connection to a database. Now. Um, because I'm running uh, my Linux server and I'm connect, this script is also going to be uh, running on the Linux server. Um, in my case, it's also localhost. Now, the username and the password are of course different. You will need to use username and password that you that you need to connect to your database. Um, they are secure, and um, I'm not showing them here. And then database name. This is the database uh, we've created uh, in our um, initial um, video. Uh, so uh, I think it's called um, my photo app, but I'll double check later. So these are database connection details. So you will need to update them. Okay, and the next uh, line is also very important. Here we request, uh, we read some of the request uh, parameters. Um, and uh, this line supports HTTP GET only. So um, because I'm going to be testing it with um, through the browser window, which is HTTP GET, and uh, my Swift app will be sending HTTP requests to it, it will be POST. So uh, to support GET and POST, I will, for the time being, use REQUEST. Later on, when I'm done with my um, development, I will update request and leave it as post only. I want the script to accept HTTP posts request only. Okay, so for now I will leave uh, dollar sign underscore request. Dollars are underscore request. So once you update this file and once you provide correct uh, database connection detail, so localhost will also most probably be localhost for you, and then your username, password, and the database name to which you're connecting. Uh, and that's it. And once done, uh, we can um, move this file to our remote server. So I will take the APNs file, drag and drop it to my uh, remote server. Okay, and the uh, last file that we need to configure is called samples. Well, this file uh, contains uh, examples of um, um, different um, how uh, what are the different types of messages we can send and how we can configure our push message and it's a very simple file so the top of it we've already discussed it's how we include um, files from the classes folder and then our database connection um, uh, lines and then we uh, here we create APN's uh, object we don't need to change anything here and here's the very first example of how we create a new message with the content and we add some custom parameters to that message and we queue it, um, making it record in our database. Uh, and then we process this message. There are more examples, but we will go one by one later. So in this file, in this file, in samples PHP, all you need to configure is a database connection and the way you uh, include uh, PHP files from the classes folder. I'll leave it this part as is because it perfectly works for me, but database connection details need to be updated. And I have actually started up my database server now to uh, just look up my database name. So our database uh, name is called uh, My Photo App. So I'll copy it. And inside of that, we have uh, two uh, tables. Uh, the one with devices and the one with uh, messages. So I will go back to my development environment and I'll use this one. I'll change database name under samples file and I'll change database name under um, APNs file. These are the, the two files that need to have a database name updated. Now I'll switch back to my um, FileZilla, the FTP client, and I'll upload these two files on my um, server. And uh, yes, one more thing, we've uploaded um, development and push certificate 
files uh, now the file permission uh, will uh, most probably need to be changed so the way we change uh, file permission is by double clicking on the file i mean right mouse click on the file choose file permission and it's um 644 it's fine it will work this way it should work if it doesn't work in your case update it to 400 uh, set it to 400 to a more secure um access if in case it doesn't work for your server and uh this is it basically our uh, php files are configured and uh, we can uh, continue